The National Bureau of Statistics, NB, has recently released consumer price index data for January 2024, revealing a significant escalation in the cost of imported food within the Nigerian economy. Over a span of four years, from January 2020 to January this year, the average price index for imported food witnessed a staggering increase, more than doubling from 337.8 to 692.6. This marked an unprecedented rise of 105.03% in the period under review. The CPI is a critical economic indicator and it measures the average change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services, including food. My guest, Prince Wali Bama Oyekoya, is the MD CEO of Bama Farms Limited. He's a former chairman, a Greek and non oil sector at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He joins me now to look at the food insecurity and recent developments in the nation. Good morning to you, Prince Uyukoya. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Yeah. Let's start with one that is on the lips of everyone as, as, uh, since um, Saturday or so. Nigeria is actually getting of, uh, over 20 uh, metric tons of um, grains from Ukraine that is supposedly in a war situation. What does this really tell about um, us? Are we like so much in poverty? Are we also indirectly at war? Well, definitely what Ukraine have done is on humanitarian grounds, and that means that they have excess. Mm. It's only when you have excess that you could be able to give out. Okay. So that shows that there's something fundamentally wrong with our system in Nigeria. Mm. If a country in a one turn can still be looking out for a country like us that is not at war, mm. giving us grain, giving us food, that means our system needs to be overhauled. That means a state of emergency needs to be declared in terms of food production in Nigeria. And if you, if you remember how long we've been talking about food shortage, the food crisis, for almost about 10 years now. Yes, we but we have been having leaders that are not really focused or that does not have the visions for tomorrow. The only plans they have may be short-term terms, like two years or four years. But we're talking of food production. You have to be having a long term mm. plans, like 20, 30, 50 years. That what is going to happen to my people in the next 50 years? But if you don't have such a plan, what is happening now is bound to be happening. Because if you look at what is really happening, it's a very simple thing. Because we have the most beautiful atmosphere to produce all these things. We have a lot of vast land, arable land, to produce some of these things. And I keep on saying that we don't have to produce everything. Like this rice we are talking about and wheat, there are so many substitutions for it. Mm -hmm. We plant cassava, we plant yam, all these things could be, could be substituted. But there are so many things that are really affecting us in this country, especially the security. Mm -hmm. Without the security, most farmers have been displaced in their, in their locations. Most farmers are retired voluntarily and involuntarily. And look at what is really happening in the Northeast. Uh, if you look at most of the food we eat in the South mm -hmm. comes from the North. But now, if the north cannot even feed themselves, can they bring anything to the southwest? No, so, no. or the south or the southeast? This is where the south really need to buckle up. That if care is not taken, what happened in Abuja, where my citizens have to go into the government warehouse, oh. will happen everywhere. I don't pray that it happen, but believe me, let with the way things are going, there's hunger in the land. And we've been talking about this hunger a long time ago, but there have not been any provisions in order for this thing to be averted. Okay, and just recently, the African Development Bank, I said in my intro, is pledging to support Nigeria's um, agricultural sector with a whopping $134 million um, dollars investment in that enhancing food production. But my question right now is that um, how far would this go uh, in terms of um, reaching the exact uh, mm -hmm. farmers who really need this all, or like the political farmers that you always talk about? Because they are, according to tradition, the president said, uh, the president of the AFDB said they want to help to cultivate uh, 300,000 hectares of rice and maize and 150,000 hectares of cassava and 50,000 hectares of soybeans uh, during this year's um, planting season. I think we've been hearing this long, for a long, long time that we have not been getting anything to the tables of the farmers. As you say, yes. Where does it get to, really? It doesn't get to the hands of the farmers. It's just like it's money for some, for some people in the government. Especially when they hear that dollars coming from abroad. It's like, 
they don't take agriculture serious in this country. That is why we are being hungry. And that is why they always say a, an, a, a hungry man is always an angry man. They have not said anything yet. If this trend continues, you may receive so many opera over there because people are really hungry and people are really angry. Because all this money coming in, yes, we are being held by the international donors. But is it really getting to the right source? There's nothing wrong to borrow, as every nation needs to borrow. But when you get that money, what did you use the money for? Is it for the money for the boys or people in the government? Mm -hmm. Whereas you neglected where the money is supposed to be shining into because I believe if successful government have been doing the right thing, Nigeria have no business been begging for food. We have no business um, uh, looting what we have in the, in the reserve because uh, there are so many trending. A lot of Nigerians want to go into farming, but the environment is not conducive. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you an example of what happened to our own people. Let, let us hear it. Yeah. Our yeah. own people, our own farmers in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. December 10, the military men just came into our farmland. Almost about 30 farmers have been displaced right now. They said the land belongs to them. But how did we get to this land? The Lagos State Government allocated this land to us when we were being displaced from where we were before at, at Afero. All of a sudden, the military came. They said they've been looking for their land for the past two years. That the Lagos State Government have no business or have no right to have allocated the land to us. We've been trying to cry to the Lagos State Government up to this moment, either through the Ministry of Agriculture or through the Agri Land Holding or through the Governor's Office, I've not been able to get it to us. Now you are talking about food shortages. You are talking of food crisis. How many people are even in these farm businesses? And the few people that are doing it, you are displacing them. You are not making them <coughs> happy. You make them jobless. You, let them, you make them to lose their investment. A lot of directly or indirectly, almost about 500 workers have been have been displaced so we, a lot need to be done so that we can do more to bring food to the to the table of every nigerians all right it's still uh, it's still business insights on plus tv africa we'll take a quick break right now and we'll be back with more talk on food security in a moment to join us again All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa. We're looking at food security in the country and how we can mitigate against um, the high cost of uh, food infl inflation. And I still have a uh, Prince Wale Oyekoya of Bama Farms with me. And before we took that break, we were talking about the challenges uh, mitigating against the uh, you know, flourishing of um, agriculture and farming in the country. Now, specifically, you talked about what has happened in terms of land allocation in Lagos State and um, what um, the challenges some farmers are having with um, the, military. Uh, the military. So over time, have you been able to reach out to the Lagos State Government and what, um, what um, uh, comments or what reactions have you gotten so far? Even, before the, even before the military invasions, right from the time the land was given to us by Fashola's regime, 2015, 2016, we've been having a lot of challenges. And we've been trying to let the Lagos State Government know that we have not been enjoying this land. Uh, their money level will come, the, uh, the property developers will come, so many. Sometimes we have to, uh, we have to pay the Lagos State government yeah. for security because the way their money level and this uh, property developer have come, it's like they are taking over the farm. And that even leads us to some of us, the money that we're supposed to, sp to use for farming, we have to use for fencing yeah. in order for us to get security. We are talking of high smart security. Now we are talking about moneyless security. Now we are even talking about Lagos State government that is giving us a land that does not even have a comfort. Mm. Because it's like we are not even enjoying the land at all. This is the second time we are being displaced. So who knows what is going to happen next? But we cannot just fold our arms. And the government will be saying that we need to feed our people, that there is a food shortage in the country. And you are displacing people that are even interested. That's why the fact that we are not even getting anything from the government to even uh, assist us. Mm. Right from the over 10 years we've been business in this place in Motaku, which is along the Itoki and Ekwe Aziz. We have not been getting anything from the government. Even the, our, the little work that we are doing, and we are getting being dispersed, mm. and the government is not even looking to it. So need, something needs to be done with our government mm -hmm. in order for us to get full supply. Let's just hope the Lagos State government looks into this and them so that uh, people who are willing to farm can actually farm in peace. And of course, uh, the issue of our food security can be addressed but uh, another story that is uh, developing that uh, is uh, you know trending right there is that federal government is initiating distribution of 42,000 metric tons of grains to kickstart dry season farming how far can that go 
See, there are so many political statements going on. Just the yeah. same way of palliative they be talking about. How many people even enjoy this palliative? How many people have been given these palliatives? I think there should be a time that the government needs to see that these people they are lying to, they already wise up. Why are we lying to them? Why can't we do the right thing? How many state governments are giving out the palliative that the federal government gave to them? And I keep on saying that we should stop blaming the federal government. What about the state government? Why are they there for? With all the allocation they are getting from the federal government, with all the IGA, IGA they, are, they are generating, with all the security votes they are getting, we still having all this kind of insecurity all over around. So what are they doing with all this money instead of them to focus on their state, on how they can feed their own people, they keep on galvanizing around the country, around the world. It is about time for us to hold our governors and the local government chairman accountable because they are, the, they are the most people that are very close to the to the masses, not the federal government. So the federal government have no business doing business in agriculture. It's the state government. And if you remember the 1978 Land Use Act, mm. it gives the power to all the state governors on how they can use the land, especially in terms of agriculture. Most of the rural lands that have been converted into urban development. That way, most of the people that are supposed to be doing farming have been displaced. So it's a bad time for us to hold all our act all our state governors are accountable that listen with all this money you people are making we need, we have no business being being hungry especially in nigeria that in the olden days in the 60s 70s you remember the granite pyramids you remember the cocoa you remember the rubber we used to be the first 10 shots in terms of agricultural produce but look at it now we are behind the be behind the schedule okay so what do we begin to do now because i, I need to find out solutions in the short term because as it is right now you go to the market each day uh for instance uh they tell you um, um uh, 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 uh what what do they call this container now for buying uh Gary's, uh gary uh, and, uh, uh paint of guy they tell you it's about uh i don't even know how much it is but if you go for uh, small measures now they yeah. tell you it's about one four for the price of beans mm. you know as against the uh, what used to be sold at 500 609 most people cannot really buy gary or beans that used to be like normal staples as a food that people can actually just manage and not but right now it's almost becoming luxurious to even feed in nigeria as i said it shows the systematic failures of our previous governments yes and the, the price will keep on going up because we are not producing. Let us, be, let us face the reality. That is why there is hunger in the land. We are not producing. And as I said, the few people that are producing, they are being displayed by the headsmen, by the kidnappers, by the Boko Haram, even by the government itself. Because what happened to us is by the government. It's mm. not by, by headsmen. So if we keep on continuing, the trend will keep on continuing until all the, all the three tiers of government could sit down at the round table and say, listen, what are we doing wrong? It's a bad time for us to be able to feed our people, not just consuming or investing all this money. And most of the funds, most of the intervention funds that are coming are not really getting to the farmers. You know, we'll we be discussing this thing time without numbers. And if this money has been shining and be given to the real farm, we will not be having all this problem we are having. Sure. But now everything is blown to the face of everybody now. Mm. So the, the federal government is crying, the state government is crying, but I hope they are crying, their cry is genuine. Because if it is not genuine, we still come back to the same table of hunger. So to me, I believe it's doable with all the human resources we have, with all the human capacity we have, with all the natural resources we have. Uh, we have no business begging for food. We have no business for other countries to pity yeah. us, to feed us. When we can do the same thing. You know, before we used to call about family farming. Yeah. Family farming is being done all over the world. That if, if private homes is being encouraged to plant anything in their backyard, You'll be able to eat and feed your family. Subsistence farming. Yeah. Subsistence farming, which is the same thing as family farming. It's yeah. made practice in China, US, UK. And the rest, what do you, what, what happened to the rest? You don't throw it away. You take to it to the market, to which is what they call free market to help your community. Until this thing is back. And gone are the days that you expect the youth of nowadays to go to the farm with cutlass and hoe. It's the better to modernize what we are doing. And with a population of almost about 300 million, we are being deceived because there have not been no census in the last 10 years mm. so the government does not even know how many people they are mm -hmm. feeding and if you don't know how many people you are going to feed it's going to be a problem they say having be, be uh, at the back of their mind that we are still under 200 million people which is not mm. 
So all these things are affecting us. And climate change is another thing. Climate change is affecting the whole world. But what is each government doing to really cushion the effect? Are we practicing irrigation during the dry season? The answer is no. We are nothing but a red-fed uh, agricultural uh, nation. So without irrigation, what is going to happen? Most of these vegetables that are supposed to take three months, it will only be done in another six months or nine months. So without the government tackling the climate change and giving our funds, and at the same time, to give a conducive environment to the farmer, we keep on having the food shortages as we are having today. All right, um, thank you so much, um, Prince uh, Wale Oyekoya. But I just must um, ask, uh, in fact, very quickly, in 30 seconds, so I could just get this out of my head. So are we saying that um, right now, in the immediate term, maybe in the next three months, uh, we cannot see a reversal of um, you know, prices of food stuff, that uh, maybe in the next three months we can go back to the market and buy beans again for like um, 600 now for... It's America. not possible and it's possible if you have to import. We have to open our borders. With the way things are, as I say, I keep on saying that we are not producing as i give advice in other on uh, other platform mm. open your borders or else you are going to starve your people like rice now is almost about hundred thousand now mm. but if you open your borders i bet you the price will be slashed now and some of these states they have this rice milling equipment mm. allow the allow them to bring the rice party for them yeah. so that they can be processing and they can crash the price of rice All in right. the country i thank you so much Prince Wale i mean when we talk about food when we talk about agriculture you know, everyone has to be involved because at the end of the day, if there's no food in the stomach, things like the looting and insecurity will continue to just in the its way. Definitely. But then, I hope the government listens to some of this advice that um, have been put forward and, uh, you know, just create some sort of a turnaround. But we do appreciate your time on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. It is indeed a pleasure. That's as much as we can take. Uh, my guest has been Prince Wally Uyikoya, the MD CEO of Bama Farms. And we have been looking at the issue of um, food insecurity and of course, uh, the main thing that Nigerians are talking about right now, uh, Ukraine, you know, feeding us per se, and uh, the federal government distributing 42,000 metric tons of grains to assist in the dry season famine. Um, my name is Justin Akadonye, Business Insight will return to your screen again, same time. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>